Welcome to the Programming with Codia podcast. Learn to program on the iPad for the iPad. My name is Patrick Oxel, and in today's lesson, we are going to continue with putting images, but this time very special images. We're going to put buttons on the screen. Last time we used our helper class, which we inserted into our program, and that provides special functionality so that we didn't have to rewrite the code to try to figure out if we're touching um, objects over and over again. So we created this program where we could move objects around and it would tell us when we're touching them or not. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this program and we're going to use another functionality that the helper class provides and that is for a button. So we're just going to take this and make a copy of it. And we're going to leave our helper class just as it is. And we're going to rename this. And once again, we'll just take out all the functionality that we wrote last time. So we're just going to remove the beetle and the planet. Finally, from the draw. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a variable for a button. So we're going to do it just like we did for our image. We're going to call it a button. Don't call the variable button um, because that's a reserved word that's in the helper class. And then in setup, we're going to go and we're going to get an image for a button. Codia provides several of them for us. So we're just going to go, and we're actually going to get it from the CargoBot app. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's a fast forward button here. So we're just going to grab that name. So it works the same as our image does. First of all, you put the name. I'm just going to comment this out since we don't need it anymore. And we have to have it in quotes. There we go. So you put the name and then you put a vector two, which is the location of where you want the button. So for our example, I'm just gonna place it once again, right in the middle of the screen. So width divided by two, height divided by two, and end. So, made one mistake here actually have to call button. There we go. So this line of code takes our variable and assigns it button from our helper class. And the button takes in two arguments, which is the image and then a vector two, which is the location. Now, once again, it's not going to show up if you run this because we haven't put anything in draw. So you have to make sure that you draw your button. So it works exactly the same as our other one did. We have a button and it's a colon and it's the draw method. So now when you run it, you'll notice that our button is there. Now, we didn't write anything in touch. The way a button works is there's two kind of standard things that could happen in an app on the iPad. One would be if you touch it, the image sort of changes slightly to tell you that you're resting on top of the button. Or the other thing is sometimes it grows slightly. So in my helper class, I did the second so that when we touch the button, it should grow slightly. Another thing to remember is that this is an iPad and it's not 
a Windows computer with a mouse. With a mouse, usually when you put your cursor over an object and click, it's the click that is the event that you're looking for. And that's not the case on the iPad. Usually on the iPad, when you put your finger over the button, it should give you feedback, but it's when you release the button is when you're looking for the event to happen. So we're going to make sure that both of those things happen. So in our touch event, we're going to check for uh, touching happen on our button. So a button, colon, and we're going to use the touched event again with the parameter of touch. And now when you run it and you go over the button, you'll notice it grows slightly, which is nice. Now, it's nice that it's telling us that we've touched the button, but we need some kind of feedback. We need to ask the question, question, am I being touched? Or in this case, the question is, have I been selected? So once again, since you're asking a question and it has a Boolean answer, either it's yes or no, I have been released from being touched or not. We're going to do an if statement. So if our variable a button, this time it's slightly different. It's a dot and you're looking for selected. So has the button been selected? If that is equal to true, then we should do something. And to start with, I'm just going to print to the console window that the button has been pressed. So print the button has been released. So once again, on the iPad, the functionality we're looking for is if I'm on the button and it has grown slightly and I let go while it's in that state, then that is considered a select. So here's my button. You'll notice on the output there is nothing. When I go over the button, it grows, but if I move off of it and haven't released, I still don't get a message. But if it grows and I let go while it's big, then I get the message. So that's the functionality that we're looking for in a button. One other thing that we're going to add this time is sound effects in music. So oftentimes in a game you have music playing in the background and then when a certain event happens, you touch a button and you fire a missile or when something collides, a sound effect happens. So Codia actually has both of these functionalities built in. So music playing in the background, that kind of functionality we would want to start in setup because that should happen as soon as this screen shows up. And as you could imagine, there is a reserved word called music. And in music, it, you pick a soundtrack and it will start playing it in the background. So if you just select this, you will notice that Codia comes with two pieces of sound effects and music that are built right in. So I'm going to select the one Heroes Quest and I'm going to pick this piece of music right here. So if we play that, you might or might not be able to hear it. Because of the my setup, you might not be actually able to hear that. Anyway, so it does start to play music in the background for you, which is nice. That's what we want. There is two other things that we can add to this. A next parameter, you'll notice in IntelliSense it popped up. It said loop. So true will mean that it will loop the sound over and over again when it runs to the end. So that's nice. And the last one is volume, and it's between 0 and 1 one being the highest, so I'm just going to lower the volume slightly. So that's one way that you can actually have sound effects, and that will just play in the background continuously. The other way is an actual sound effect. 
and this one, there is a reserved word called sound. And it works much the same. So I'm just going to go and get a sound effect this time. And I'm going to go to here and I'm going to pick arrow shot. So a sound effect just happens once. It's very short. It will override what's happening in the background. And when it ends, then the background music will just continue. So I don't think you can hear my music, but on your code, you should have music in the background. And when you touch the button, it will also play a sound as well. So two things today that we learned. The first is how to create a button and a button functions slightly different than just an image in that it grows slightly to warn you that you are over top of it. And we learned how to create music in our setup and how to create sound effects. And that's all we're going to do for today.